We are live, y'all. We are live. We are back in this thing. Yeah. And we moving on. Today, we want to shift. We want to shift because we want to talk about a few things today. All right, y'all. Y'all knock it off. I know y'all excited. What an awesome thing it is to be in the real truth. Now, today we want to talk about fringes. We're going to talk about fringes. We're going to talk about the Sabbath. And then we're going to shift and talk about camp idolatry okay camp idolatry we're gonna talk about that all right because that right there that's gonna be the money that's gonna be the money yeah now what I want to do is I want to get a scripture read for the first time in forever I want Numbers 15, 38 to be read. Because it's been a while. I know it's been a while. That way I can get situated. All right. Let's get that. This is the book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. Speak unto the children of Israel, and bid them that they make fr- them, and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations, and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. All right. Now I want you to read verse 39. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it. And remember all the commandments of the Lord, and do them, and that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes, after which ye use to go a whoring. All right, now I want somebody to read Deuteronomy 22 and 12, because I'm going to make it real simple. This is going to be the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 12. Let's get that. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 12. Thou shalt make thee... Fringes upon the four quarters of thy vesture, wherewith thou coverest thyself. All right, so these are the only scriptures in the entirety of the Bible that is speaking of wearing fringes to remind us of the commandments. Now, mind you, the children of Israel has been expelled. They've been kicked out of Jerusalem. Jesus was going around casting out devils, casting out devils, Casting out devils. And what do you know? The last devil Israel was cast out of their land in 70 CE. Now I want to go to Jeremiah. This is going to be the book of Jeremiah. Chapter 31. Make sure y'all write this down. And I'm going to read verse... 29. In those days they shall say no more. The fathers have eaten a sour grape, and the children's teeth are set on edge. But everyone shall die for his own iniquity. Every man that eateth the sour grape, his teeth shall be set on edge. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. So when we talk about wearing fringes, those fringes was connected to that first covenant. And as we just read, which my covenant they break. Although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. 
Verse 33, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. Verse 34, and they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Now this new covenant that he's making with the house of Israel is not established on sacrifice. It is based on every man dying for their own sins. So if you wear fringes, that's on you. But wearing fringes is connected to the first covenant. Okay, and God made a new covenant with the house of Israel. It is not established on sacrifice. Remember, he said, I'm making a new covenant, not according to the covenant that he made with our fathers. That covenant was established on sacrifice. He's saying, I'm making a new covenant. Okay, when the fathers, just because they ate sour grapes, is not going to set the children's teeth on edge. So this is going into a covenant where every man is going to be accountable for their own sins. Ain't nobody dying on a cross for you. You're going to have to pay your way. You're going to be held accountable for your own sins. All right. You are going to be judged based on what you do. Okay. Not what your fathers did. Not what your grandma did. You're going to have to face God Almighty. Ain't nobody holding your hands. And you going to be accountable for what you do. All right? We established that. There's no need to go further into detail about the fringes. It's only in the Bible three times. It's not mentioned at all in the New Testament. Okay? It's not mentioned at all in the Apocrypha. Okay? So now we want to talk about the Sabbath. Now, keep in mind, the children of Israel, they had phylacteries, okay? Which is something that Israelites were supposed to wear too. They was commanded to wear phylacteries. Now, when you look around these local Israelite camps, they are not wearing phylacteries, okay? The only ones who are wearing phylacteries are the ones they call the so-called Jews, okay, in Israel today. They are the ones that got the box on their head. But the Israelite camps, they selective. They selective with what commandments they keep. And this is in Deuteronomy 11, 18. I'm going to read this. Uh, it reads, these included religious emblems. And I'm reading the definition of phylacteries. Such as phylacteries and fringes. Phylacteries are known today as teflon. They are small leather boxes containing pieces of parchment with scripture written on them. The phylactery boxes were strapped to the left arm or forehead in literal obedience to Deuteronomy 11.18. Now the word phylacteries is only in the Bible one time in the New Testament. Okay, And the Pharisees was wearing those things Okay, and wasn't even keeping the commandments. And that will be seen in Deuteronomy 11, 18 through 21 in your own time. And the other reference of them wearing phylacteries in the New Testament is Matthew chapter 23, verse 5. Okay, so now we want to talk about the Sabbath. I just want to talk about the Sabbath real briefly. Okay, now we know that the Sabbath day was really a celebration from freedom, okay? It was a celebration of freedom from slavery, rather, okay? Because the children of Israel were in Egypt. Abraham never kept the Sabbath. Isaac never kept the Sabbath. Jacob never kept the Sabbath. The Sabbath came after Moses, through Almighty God, rescued the children of Israel from Egypt. Okay, and it was a day that they were supposed to observe uh, as along with the strangers. Okay, 
that were in their land. So this was something the children of Israel was supposed to do. And like I told you before, a lot of people like to bring out the rest from God's work and they go all the way back to Genesis and all that. Well, then how come Abraham wasn't celebrating it? How come Jacob wasn't? Okay. Israel was celebrating it because it was their day of freedom. The Egyptians worked them. They worked them to death. So that Sabbath day was a day of freedom. Not only for them to observe, but for everyone who was in their country. Now, I want to read Acts chapter 15, verse 21. All right, and this reads, For Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him, being read in the synagogues every Sabbath. Now, I'm going to tell you something about the Sabbath. The Sabbath day was not kept the way it was supposed to be kept through the entire New Testament, okay? All you have is scriptures of Jesus, Paul, the disciples, reasoning with the Jews and preaching and teaching on the Sabbath day. Now, the Sabbath day was supposed to go like this. There was supposed to be no working, no buying, no selling, no carrying things. They ain't supposed to carry no burdens. And if you read in the New Testament, Jesus did not even adhere to it fully, okay? Because he was doing miracles. And he told a man to carry his mat on the Sabbath day. And the scriptures say in the book of, I believe, John, that he broke the Sabbath day. Let's get that real quick. All right. It might be chapter 5. Yeah, that's the one I want. Chapter 5. John chapter 5, verse 18. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. So this is, this is the two things you got to deal with. Okay. According to the Quran, Jesus came and he confirmed the Torah. He confirmed the law. Okay. In the Gospels, he confirmed the law. So according to the Quran, Jesus was under the law of Moses. However, in the New Testament, it makes it seem like Jesus did not keep the Sabbath. Okay? Same thing with Paul. Paul literally said, let no man judge you. And there's no scriptures where they say, hey, keep the Sabbath day. Keep the Sabbath day. All an Israelite camp uh, leader or anybody that want to try to make you keep the Sabbath, all they can do is go to scriptures where Paul reasoned with the Jews on the Sabbath day and Jesus as his custom going into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. But it don't say he kept it because we just read how he did. not Okay, he was doing miracles. All right. And he was teaching. And according to the law of Moses, and this is in Acts 15, 21. I'm going to go there real quick. Because this is going to shut it down. Just simple. For Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him being read in the synagogues every Sabbath. So every Sabbath, it wasn't a day for you to get up and preach. The Sabbath day was not a day for you to teach. The Sabbath day was a day for you to not work, not buy not carry anything, and for you to listen to the law of Moses. And according to the New Testament, they wasn't doing that. They was teaching, and they was reasoning with the Jews, trying to pull the Jews into this new religion, okay? So with that, we're going to move on. Now we want to talk about idolatry. We want to talk about 
camp idolatry. Now, I want someone to read Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 1 through 3. This is going to be the foundational scripture for what we are going through right now. All right. A lot of people are worshiping man. Let's get that. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 8, verse 1. At that time, saith the Lord, they shall bring out the bones of the kings of Judah, and the bones of his princes, and the bones of the priests, and the bones of the prophets, and the bones of the inhabitants of Jerusalem out of their graves. All right, so he's bringing up the kings. He's bringing up the princes. Not only that, the priests and the prophets and the people. So this is targeting all classes. Let's keep going. And they shall spread them before the sun, and the moon, and all the host of heaven, whom they have loved, and whom they have served, and after whom they have walked, and whom they have sought, and whom they have worshipped. And whom they have worshipped. Okay? God is angered at that. He's angered at that. Now, let's keep going. They shall not be gathered, nor be buried. They shall be for dung upon the face of the earth. And death shall be chosen rather than life by all the residue of them that remain of this evil family. Of this evil family. So what nation is he talking about? Israel. He's talking about Israel. Okay. Because the children of Israel, they could not settle with being prince. They were prince. What did they want? They wanted a king like all the other nations. Not knowing that when they desired a king, it was a very wicked thing. Because basically they just flipped off God. Because God was their king. That's why Samuel was so disappointed with Israel when they asked for a king. Because God was their king. The other nations, they had kings because they didn't have the one true God. So I'm going to show you some scriptures because a lot of people... They see scriptures in the Bible where it says, and they worshiped Jesus. And they fail to realize that Jesus was not the only person that was worshiped. We just read right here in Ezekiel. Um, we just read right here in Jeremiah, rather, chapter 8, how they was worshiping the kings, the princes, the people. This was something that was going on with all people. People was worshiping people. Just like today, people are worshiping people. Now, I'm going to show you a scripture where the children of Israel worship God and they worship David. This is going to be 1 Chronicles 29, 20. And David said to all the congregation, Now bless the Lord your God, and all the congregation bless the Lord God of their fathers, and bow down their heads. And worship the Lord and the king. Okay? That's talking about David. That is talking about David. Okay? And there's scriptures that talk about how they would do obeyance to David. Okay? And the king. Okay? That's what they would do. They would show honor. Okay? And they was doing this in the gospels. They was doing this to Jesus, okay? Now, I'm going to show you a scripture in the last book. Because in the last book, there comes a correction on just bowing down to any and everybody, okay? This is going to be Revelation chapter, let me see, 22 verse 9. And it reads, Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not. Let's see what he's talking about. I'll start at verse 8. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not. For I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren, the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book. Now look what he says. Worship God. The angel had to come with the medicine.
medicine. He had to come with the remedy. He's like, looky here, man. Worship God. Don't worship me. Don't worship nobody else. Worship God. He didn't say worship Jesus. Okay? And for you people, y'all got the nerve. And y'all listen to some of these guys like Mr. Sam. And he tells you it's okay to worship Jesus. There's not one single ambiguous statement in the entirety of the Bible. And mind you, Jesus ain't even mentioned until the New Testament where Jesus says, I am God, worship me. It's not in there. Now, if you try to bring up that before Abraham was I am and all that, that is beating around the bush. Okay. I want exact scripture where it's literally saying worship Jesus because Jesus told the devil, he said, you ought to worship the Lord thy God alone. So if you don't have any scripture for worshiping Jesus, why would you do it? Why would you do it? You're supposed to worship God and him alone. Okay, so don't let these people deceive you. They come with all these different breakdowns and they think they have knowledge. But you cannot put something in Jesus' mouth that he didn't say. Jesus never once ever said worship himself. He told you to worship God and you cannot serve two masters. So now we want to talk about camp idolatry. And I have a video that I'm going to show. Yeah, I'm going to show this video. So sad how our people are, man. It, it really is. It really is. Here we have a man on a horse. Let's play this. Tell me you are in a cult without telling me in words. Here we have a man on a horse. This don't make no sense. This do not make any sense. All right, that's enough of that. Now, it ain't like you just conquered the whole Roman Edomite Empire and you put all your people on, okay? No, you riding the horse by yourself. Even in the book of Revelation, Jesus, whom they say is Jesus, okay, that man wasn't riding the horse by himself, okay? They all was riding horses with him, okay? And that right there, when I look at that, I see a man not riding the horse honorably, okay? Now, Mehmet II, he conquered the Roman Empire, okay? He did something no man could do, and it was according to prophecy. He came in there and said he was the new Caesar. Now, that was honorably. Okay, because you actually did something. Okay, so this is what we talk about when we talk about people committing idolatry. Now, I want to read the definition of idolatry. Idolatry consists in divinizing what is not God. Man commits idolatry whenever he honors and revers a creature in place of God. Whether this be gods or demons, for example, Satanism, power, pleasure, race, ancestors, the state, money, etc. So whenever you worship something God created more than God, you have just committed idolatry. And this is what the Apostle Paul teaches, okay? In the Gospel of John, that narrative is pushed as well, okay? Paul teaches us that God created all things through Jesus Christ, all right? He makes Jesus the creator, all right? Now, if you read that same Bible, if you go into the Apocrypha and you go through Genesis, you'll see that God is the creator. God is the creator. So this narrative that Jesus is God has been thoroughly pushed by the Apostle Paul. And all these men you see that are being idolized today 
It all came from that same spirit. It started when the nation of Israel desired a king. Okay, this is the reason why when they tried to make Jesus king, he ran and he hid. When Caesar said, aren't you the king of the Jews? He said, you say it. Thou sayest. He said, I came to bear witness of the truth. Jesus always included his father as king. He said, for thine is the kingdom. For thine is the power. For thine is the glory. Yours is the kingdom. Jesus never once ever tried to be king. That scripture is nowhere in the entire Bible. Now, I have some other stuff to show you which is so sad, okay? Now, this is what I call pure idolatry. Check this out. Well, I got the definite. Beard has been heavy. Yeah. We got to expose the lies and set up the truth. You know, when I first heard it, when I first was listening to it, you know, you don't wait to the last moment to try to get right with the Lord. You know, take initiative. All right. Take initiative to serve the Lord in truth and sincerity. Fear the Lord. Call upon his name now. That's what I got got from that as well. From my listening to that, uh, listening to the brother's dream science vision. Very, very heavy. And if you notice, the spirit has been heavy. It's like you. The spirit has been heavy on the IUIC. Well, it's like you. The Lord has been sending the spirit heavy upon the IUIC to call upon the true name of the Lord. As uh, the elder Apostle Gabar brought out, you know, you had that... Uh, Appear to be Edomite. Hey, she could have been a Jade. Uh, I'm gonna get to the point real quick. Months, a go, dream slash vision here we go. of the path on um go back just a little bit right here. Doing my uh my lesson on um what the elders and, and brothers have already done, their lesson on uh, uh the elder elder Yahweh Khan's uh, dream slash vision of the passing away of Bishop Nathaniel of the IUIC. And uh, you listen to the video, which, uh, hey, if you haven't listened to it yet, I advise you to listen to it. It was very, very edifying, very heavy as well. And parts of what I got from it, you know, when I first heard it, when I first was listening to it, you know, you don't wait to the last moment to try to get right with the Lord. All right. That's all I need right there. So here we have a brother getting on, praising IUIC. And then he's talking about another man's dream of taking over IUIC. Having a dream about a man dying and then you coming in and taking his place. I mean... This is the stuff I'm trying to tell you. This is why God took the kingdom from Israel, man. We are a mess. We run around here thinking we somebody when we're nobody. The last and final messenger was Prophet Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon him. There ain't no prophets, okay? All these people are doing is going by witchcraft. Now, that right there, that was just out of order. How can we, as people, build a nation if we like that? That was just so hypocritical, and that was just so fake. If a man have a dream, let that man share his vision. How are you going to ride on another man's coattail and believe that dream? Let me ask you a question. If that dream is not true, what you going to do? Is that going to be your, your, your cue to leave, or are you going to stay with this? This is nonsense. I have more stuff to show y'all. Here we have on the screen. And I ain't even got to put it on there. I'll just show y'all this picture. This guy right here is Yaju. 
And he claims to be the Messiah. I'm going to let my wife, I want you to speak for just a few seconds on the camp idolatry you have just witnessed. Well, for I, what I experienced is um, the whole year we were at this call called IUIC. I experienced um, pictures of uh, so-called bishops, so-called captains, deacons um, all over the school, which they don't call it church, they call it schools, IUIC schools, but uh, when I was friends with all these so-called sisters in IUIC all around the world, I noticed that um, they were always posting uh, the so-called Bishop Nathaniel's picture everywhere, all over Facebook and all the inter um, social media. And to me, that is called idolatry because you're like worshiping an image and you, you see this man coming in and the uh, no horse, and you see all the sisters, so so called sisters, getting all excited and crying, and you bow down when you can agree them. That's worship it to me. You're worshiping uh, somebody that's idolatry. It's just like the Catholics, they have idols all over their church, all over their houses. They bow down, they pray, and that's worshiping and that's idolatry. So to me, um, IUIC is literally worshiping or I, having idolatry towards the so-called Bishop Nathaniel. Because if you put up his picture everywhere, you you cry when you see him, and you jumping up and down, excited when you see him coming in that horse, and you always talking good about him and. If you're sitting down at the school and they said Bishop on deck, you had to get up and start clapping like God walked up in the room. And that was not God walking in the room, though. That is a man. So that's, to me, I, for what I experienced, that is idolatry. That's right. That is idolatry. Good speech. Yeah. That is good speech because a lot of women do not want to tell the truth about it. But you gave a good speech. I like that. All right? And, and it ain't to say we ain't down with it because we down for our nation. It's just when anybody says something that's against the Bible, that's when it's time to go. When it's against Scripture, then it's time to go. All right? And I have a few more scriptures, okay? I want to go to 1 Samuel 15, 23. And it reads, For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected thee from being king. So witchcraft, okay, Christianity, idolatry, it all goes together. Now, a lot of y'all is like, what? What did he just say? Idolatry, witchcraft, and I'm going to show you something, all right? I did a word search today in my Bible. I did a word search. And in my word search, if you was to type in, idolatry in the Bible. Matter of fact, I'm going to do it right here in y'all presence. Type in idolatry in the Bible. Guess what books it goes to and guess who, who is it talking about? Okay. Anytime idolatry is mentioned in the Bible, it's with your boy Saul. Okay. The Old Testament Saul. And in the New Testament, it's mentioned four times. And guess with who? Your boy Saul of the New Testament. 
This witchcraft, this idolatry, all comes in when you are trying to make a man king, okay, who is not king. If Jesus and God is in the same room, who is king, Jesus or God? God. God. They both can't be king. They both can't be king. And Jesus, he saw his father as king and a lot of people. They don't have enough Bible study uh, under their belt to know that the first time the children of Israel asked for a king, it was a wicked thing and it literally was a dis to the almighty God. So he rose up a Gentile messenger, messenger to bring the oneness of God back because Christianity is a polytheist religion. It is the worship of more than one God. The New Testament is worshiping two or more gods. The Old Testament is only worshiping one God. And so God rose up a Gentile messenger to bring the oneness, okay, that is missing in Christianity today, all right? We went past our time. It is time for us to get in these scripts. I mean, is y'all ready or what? Yes. yes. All right. Y'all have a good one. And peace out.